You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, the TV. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Parenthood After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Parenthood After Show. May God bless and keep you always. May your wishes are come true. Gianna's not here to sing the song. That's okay. We don't need Tiana to sing it. We can sing it, but I'm sure the fans don't want to hear us singing it. Welcome back, everybody, to AfterBuzz TV Parenthood After Show. We are here doing Season 5, Episode 21? 20? 21. 21, I think. Uh, the penultimate episode to Season 5. Uh, the finale is next week. Oh my goodness, we're here doing the episode. I'm still here. We're still here recapping this episode. I'm your host, Marissa Serafini. Tonight, I have with me Elena Jordan and I'm Danica Kennedy. Yes, okay. Overall thoughts of this episode very emotional. Oh my gosh, I cried a lot. I'm I not cried gonna a lie. Lot. I usually like this show brings me to almost crying and I'm like, oh, hold it back. And I like mm-hmm. barely shed a tear. And this time, I was like, okay, it's happening. Out Heart goes the Kleenexes. What I felt better think? when I looked over at Danica and I saw that she was crying too because <laughs> I was trying to hide it. I was just... Yeah. It's a very emotional episode, which makes me hopeful that the finale will be very upbeat and positive. I agree. I was just going to say that. that's how that's going to be. Yeah, I think they need to do that. The one really sad episode to get it out of the way and then end everything on a happier note. So let's just start this episode with... Ju and Natalie, Natalie is still in the picture, and she's kind of, what seems to me, she seems like she's kind of stalking Drew a little bit, just here and there on the college campus, and Drew's trying to study for his finals, he's stressed, he doesn't want to talk about it, get clearly given the cold shoulder, shoulder to Natalie, what did you think about this? He's way out of her league, I still think that... You think? I think he's way more attractive, and I think he's a better guy, like a better person than Drew is. I feel like she's just yeah. kind of like a party girl freshman year of college, like one of those basic girls that you meet in the dorms and you're going to sleep with and you'll remember from freshman year, you know? Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like she's his like practice relationship, like the first serious relationship he's had. That well, we've really he had seen a, him with. Yeah, like, he had a very serious relationship. I just with don't Danny. want to count her because I really don't. I don't re- like either of them. <laughs> well, they had a really <laughs> serious relationship, and they didn't have to count her. I know. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I just really think that Drew needs to move on from Third both of them. Third time's a charm. Ex Amy, ex Natalie. Maybe the next, next person go knock. They're both but crazy. It doesn't seem like Natalie's going anywhere. But I no. did like tonight's episode how Natalie finally got to say what she's always wanted to say to do for the last few weeks. And she kind of they cleared the air a bit. But she didn't apologize. She said, I wish no, I hadn't done apologize. it. But she never once said, I'm sorry. And that's what bothered me. I was like, take some responsibility, woman. Mm-hmm. This is your doing. I agree she didn't apologize. But she did admit what she did and she does regret what she did so i think her having that remorse is kind of like a self-apology to herself but i also feel like saying i feel like you weren't paying attention to me so i went off and slept with your roommate because i knew that it would upset you that's not the smartest thing either no but just her being actually honest and now really wanting a real relationship with you is a whole big step from what we first saw her like always wanted to sleep with people and be friends with benefits but now she wants an actual stable relationship from what it seems like we'll see there's a lot of girls that are like that freshman year of college though where they're kind of you know lost and confused where they like the guy but they don't want to be tied down and Mm -hmm. i think it's also pretty typical that girls will sleep with like guys friends to get attention or make the other guy jealous because Girls do screwed up things like that sometimes. I thought that, yeah, that was a very normal... I think it's shady, but it happens it all the time. 
Yeah, it, it is sad college, because sure. a lot of females do it just to get the attention from other guys. I was like, that is such a normal, common thing, and I loved how they kind of covered that in the show like because it is relatable. Good excuse. Mm-hmm. What? I'm I sorry. just felt like that but, wasn't a good enough excuse. No, it wasn't. But do you think Drew? Drew seems like he accepted it, and now he kind of actually, well, not kind of, he actually does ask Natalie to be legit boyfriend, girlfriend. <laughs> Somewhat like a proposal, kind of. I'm like, okay, did you think that was sweet, or are we just tired of Natalie at this point that we don't want them together? I was like, no, what are you doing? This is like another heart wrenching plot that they added on top of the cancer and everything else. You I know? thought it was yeah. fitting that it was that final, finals primal scream because that's what <laughs> I wanted to do when she was like, we're dating now. I was no true i agree i was at the same same point where you were at and i think i do have another witness who was watching me in the in the next room uh, in the room and i was like no why she's gonna be around for more episodes but i honestly because they're officially together now i don't think it's gonna last really long though i don't think it will either. i think maybe the beginning of next season which hopefully there is hopefully another parenthood season that when they pick this storyline up that they're going to be in a bad place and they might break up. She also hasn't had the Braverman seal of approval yet. Like No. And I really liked that scene when Sarah was at the door Love and it. she came in. It was such an awkward like, oh, the girl I'm hooking up with and my mom in the same place. And then she came back later and was like, is your mom here? Like really bitchy. Mm-hmm. I thought it was rude how she said that, but... Yeah. That's why I don't think she's going to last. She's not as nice as everyone else. She's not going to get the approval from the Bravermans. But mm-hmm. I did enjoy the scene where Sarah was like, who's she? Who, who's this girl? <laughs> like, uh, we need to talk later. You need to tell me the details about this. But um, that was fun. <laughs> so we actually got maybe some some acceptance from Sarah. It's like now that she kind of got introduced. So maybe we'll see more of the Sarah Braverman actually meeting the Natalie in the future i think that will be fun you know drew bringing home another girl i feel like Besides drew's Amy. girls are like these bitchy women that walk all over him he needs like a chill girl that can hang out with him listen to his beach music you know all the all the music this episode <laughs> did, did you notice that, that he how he was to listening to like sounds mozart and studying. ocean sounds well he's doing finals i mean have you ever done that all the time during finals, I always played this so one soundtrack tired. that was all melodic music. I kid you oh not. Oh my gosh. All through high school, every time it was finals, I played the same soundtrack. It was all peaceful music. Ocean sounds in a textbook is the perfect recipe to put me to sleep. I'm not <laughs> kidding. Like, instantly. Well, that, that was Drew's way of studying. I I can though. believe that. But <laughs> Natalie's still in the picture. But And also, another person who's still in the picture and still wants to stay with the Braverman family, Joel. Him, so Joel is actually over at Crosby's house because Crosby's floor is still all damaged from the people who were taking out the mold. And now Crosby is having standing water and the, he's having all these house issues and he has to refix the floor. He's getting Joel's just like overlooking everything just to get his approval and all of his contracting advice and stuff. <laughs> And Joel's like, well, you need to do this and this and this. And Crosby's trying to get Joel to help him out because he is a contractor, just like, but not really asking him, what did you think of the situation? Was it funny? Did you did you like how all that happened? They were very brotherly. And very I brotherly. feel like they're going to continue to be brotherly whether they stay together or not. He kind of got added onto the family as another sibling because he's in that same age and he gets along with the siblings. Mm-hmm. I like seeing scenes with them together. Well, once you're a braver man, you kind of... Braver you know, man for life. Yeah. As soon as you marry into the family, mm-hmm. you're part of that family. Yeah, and I liked how this whole situation got Joel to really consider his situation going on with Julia. Because... This, he does realize he loves being part of the Braverman family. He still wants to be part of the Braverman family and not feeling obligated to help Crosby, but just because he loves helping family. He's a family man. So uh, Pete, Pete points says. out. What did you think Ooh. of Pete saying, uh, you're a family man, obviously because it didn't work out with us because I sent all these signals to you and that's why we wouldn't Rated have worked out. Pete. 
<laughs> yeah, I was kind of like wildly. Were you surprised, girl? No, I thought that maybe they had something going on before, like they were secretly dating or something like that. But it made me proud that Joel didn't cave in to dating her. I think he's way better than her. It showed that he clearly was oblivious to that the whole time, mm-hmm. even though it also shows that Julia was not unfounded in her belief that it was kind of uncool for him to be with Pete all the time, not answering mm-hmm. her phone calls. Yeah. It's like... When you have a feeling, it's usually because there's something so, going on. Okay, so we've seen this whole season that Joel hasn't really responded to Pete, but do we think Pete sent out a lot of message, a lot of those signals out that she has feelings for Joel? I mean, have they didn't that? show it that much, but you never know what's going on. She did, I think, to some degree, but I think that it was, again, brilliant on the Parenthood writing staff to not make that super obvious. Yeah. So that it could be where Joel is like, look, I'm not doing anything wrong. She doesn't feel that way. None of it, like, this isn't the situation. And then for her to flat out say, Mm -hmm. you know, I've been sending you all these signals and you're not picking up on them. Then he just stares at her like, uh, get away from me. (laughs) But I think that's also good on Pete's part. If she was sending out those signals so early on and then she didn't act upon them, that was good of her to just, like, realize nothing's happening. I shouldn't, you know, ruin a good thing. Keep their business relationship, and that's it. She handled it well just by pointing out that she'd made things awkward and then making a quick exit Mm -hmm. after telling him to leave to go hang out with his wife's brother. With Crosby, (laughs) yes. I mean, everyone gets tempted and looks at other people, but there's only certain people that act on it, and Julia was the one that acted. So I think that Joel's still, like, mostly innocent. I think he overreacted. Mm -hmm. completely but what did you guys think about when he visited julia because i kind of had mixed feelings about that scene you know what i actually did enjoy it because after bit before that we had the scene with joel and crosby again when they finished the floor and then crosby showing the home the family home videos and stuff and really got joel thinking about family and how much he does miss the Bravermans and how much he misses julia and he's catching up on all the braverman news and, and gossip that's going on and so that leading up to Joel finally just going back to Julie just to have that nice civil conversation, I thought that was actually really sweet and a big step forward towards back to Julia that I think the whole all the fans are wanting. I was so excited for that scene because I was like, yes, he's taking that step in the right direction, but he still didn't really do that much. He was like, hey, brought some tools because your machine's been broken for a really long time and... I'm just going to ask you how you've been doing because I haven't asked you a personal question about yourself in the last few months because our marriage was like down the gutter, basically, mm-hmm. which is that sad. Makes it more realistic, too. Yeah. Because he's not going to show he's up. He's not just going to come back. Yeah. It's parenthood, not say anything. He's not just going to show up with a boombox. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. How awesome would that be? <laughs> I just feel like he's being kind of a pussy about the whole thing. Like, she barely <laughs> kissed him and, like, she was so apologetic, begging for him back, and then he was like, no, I don't want it. And now he's, like, showing up like, hey, I have tools. I just I feel like he's like, kind of I did like, though, that he came to fix the washing machine, and she goes, oh, well, I already fixed it. And he's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> it shows that Julia is dealing with everything without Joel in the picture, but then also we see Julia's side of everything that's going on she goes back to evan after last week's episode them sleeping together and then she goes up to evan and you know clears the air there too and be like um yes we had fun but hopefully it was just that i needed someone to break free with and it was with you and what did you think of evan's uh, response to to this do you think that was really good on him yeah, he was like, it was just having fun. We were having fun and we're... Very we understandable. Really well. Very understandable. I was like, This episode wow. was just an example of, this is how to act as a guy. <laughs> <laughs> if you want everyone to love you, do what all the guys in this episode do. Yeah, I thought, I was like, man, Evan is so much cooler than I thought. I mean, he's a great guy in general and he's speaking, uh, you know, sticking up for Max. And then like, that makes him a really nice, 
good person with strong morals and then to do something fun and slightly irresponsible with Julia and then brush it off like oh it's just it was just a fun one night stand and that's all it needs to be and nothing more I thought that was also kind of cool I was like dude I wish more guys like this actually existed such an awkward conversation her. to have too yeah yeah and that's her first one night stand apparently she's never had mm-hmm. one and as a grown woman I loved that that conversation that she had with Sarah though the sisterly conversation where Sarah's like don't feel bad there were a lot of good (laughs) sibling moments in this episode speaking of what's today's national national siblings day so perfect day for parenthood to be on Sarah said something to her like oh you needed to up your number anyways it was about time (laughs) Uh, I, I love Sarah in this scene just being that supportive sister and because uh do you think that was right of Sarah to say it's okay to sleep with him even though you're still technically married do you think Julia cheated even no. though she's separated from no. Joel at this point if you're separated I think that means you're on a break or especially breakup, when he flat which out means... said we're not working on a relationship right yeah now. Mm-hmm. We're if not I were her to back together right I would now. hook up with someone else too you would yeah I mean I wouldn't like just like if you're separated you're separated whether the documents are still written or not i feel like that's how you feel but i definitely would rather julia and joel get back together than i agree i love mr knight being awesome but i love how they were like yeah he's awesome and now you're done (laughs) yeah how do you how do you think joel's gonna react to finding out about evan and julia when that actually does happen I think I meant ask that last week's episode, but do you think because Joel's trying to actually make an effort to get back with Julia and and what what seems like that he's trying to get back with Julia or just like slowly working on that relationship, do you think he'd be in a more understanding place right now? Well, as I was just telling you guys, I think that Joel needs to step up his game. So I think a little friendly competition won't hurt him. (laughs) Okay. I also think it's going to be about timing and presentation, how mm-hmm. he finds out and when he finds out, whether it's going to and be from an who. explosion or if it's going to be something that mm-hmm. they work through. Agreed. Well, let us know on iTunes and YouTube. You guys are awesome with the comments and um, and also following us on Twitter. We get a lot of tweets from you fans, which we definitely appreciate. Uh, so go to iTunes. Download AfterBuzz TV Parenthood, and then you should also download the AfterBuzz TV app, which just got recently launched. Um, you have all your favorite after shows on there. It helps us as a network grow here. And thank you for the comments last week's video. Uh, I agree with uh, a lot of you. Um, I would. Yeah, someone did mention that uh, it'd be nice to have an older person's perspective on the show and I I know we're a bunch of 20 year olds on this panel so it is kind of hard and feel like we have the young perspective but it would be nice to have an adult here and there maybe they'd give their adult perspective on parenthood or you know what you should call into our after show too I know we're late at night but you should let us know yeah always share your opinions on Twitter and our YouTube we love hearing what you guys think at home and we can always bring up those topics of conversation here yeah, and uh, I believe that the person who commented, uh, they said about the, the house being sold and that maybe the, it wouldn't be just given to a certain person. I thought may, maybe that doesn't really happen in a lot of situations like that. Maybe, but in, in wills and stuff that the parents have, maybe the kids inherit it. And if, you know, maybe all of them inherited, maybe a certain kid just like one individual person inherited who knows let us know who do you guys think the house would go to adam and christina really Mm -hmm. see i would guess like sarah because she's the most down and out (laughs) Mm -hmm. she needs the most help because she lived there the last yeah i would say adam and christina because they're the most stable relationship and they already have kids Mm -hmm. so give it to the oldest probably Unless they don't want it, and then maybe it's it would be pass their there. yeah their decision, lawful decision to pass it on to whoever whoever would want it or put it on the market. 
But yes, thank you for your comments. And, you know, gets us talking about the show that we love so much. But also, okay, so let's get into Max tonight. Max, all right, we start the episode. Max just barges into Hank's studio, really furious. He's having an episode. He's throwing around equipment. I'm like, oh, do not knock over that lamp. Do you know how much that costs? So stressful. Oh my goodness. Well, what did we think of Max and how everything that was going on and like how Hank handled this situation? Max is Max. He always has his outbursts. That happens all the time. Why was Hank Mr. Good Guy this whole episode though? Like usually it's because kind he's of gonna harping end up on with his... Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prediction and spoilers. Because all of us feel like we are actually related to the Braverman family. <laughs> if he is not perfect, <laughs> then we will not approve of him being with Sarah. So, <laughs> Well, I haven't been approving of him being with Sarah. I'm I like, haven't get either, rid but of this Hank. episode, the whole episode was like, Hank's How the best. great he is Team for Hank. the kids. He's so great for Max to be around and Adam mm-hmm. even said that to Sarah. Like, hey, I'm not going to tell you who you have to end up with, but we really like him being around. I'm rooting for Hank. And then he drove Amber. We're going to get into that. But he's like really there for the kids this episode. I I think that was good on Hank's though. I don't think it was like the ulterior motive because he just wants to end up with Sarah. He has an end game. I think it was because Hank was actually a genuine guy so in this episode because he is a family man he cares about his daughter so and he's built this relationship with max and he, by extension built this relationship with the whole bravermans and so helping the bravermans out i think that just shows him like how connected he is with the family and he was just being a genuine guy so. i like too that you can really see how therapy is helping him you see that that mm-hmm. character is really evolving because You know, looking back at the earlier seasons, you really see Sarah growing and evolving and improving. And now she's kind of got her feet underneath her. Yeah. I like seeing Hank grow. And also, you know, speaking of people sending us stuff on iTunes and sending us comments and messages, I've got we've gotten articles from people saying more about uh, autism. And so I really like seeing how. You know, Adam says it best. I, I want Hank to end up with somebody and be happy because I want that for Max. So yeah, that was sweet. I do like seeing that character arc. I agree. I agree with that, but I also feel like he's dragging Sarah down a little bit. And I know he doesn't mean to and he can't help it. But, I mean, he's going through all these things and going through therapy, but he's going to her and explaining it not the same way as the therapist, you know. And it's just bringing up all these old wounds that like weren't fully healed and it's causing more drama when the past should be left in the past sometimes. I think, and also I think it might be Hank helping other people helps himself. Mm-hmm. So especially helping Max. So Max is having his tantrum and then having that understanding with Max, like knowing Asperger's and what he's going through and just like taking him down and calming him in the way that Max would understand and be compliant. I thought that was good on Hank to to really build and as a character growth as well. Uh, but so we see uh, later on that um, when Amber comes back to the studio jobs, uh, Max off that now Amber gets this dis- distressing phone call and we find out that Ryan was in an accident down in San Diego. They're all the way in Berkeley. That's a long drive. And now, and now Amber's having uh, what a very emotional breakdown on the street in front of everybody and she just wears her heart on her sleeve and she doesn't care. That performance Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. I wanted to bring that up. Both Monica Potter and May Whitman in this episode Amazing. were incredible. If Their tears brought my tears to Emmys to... next year, I'm yeah. going to be very upset. Me too. I know. <laughs> I know. And so so Amber is pretty much legitimately freaking out in her car. She's, and she's yelling at Hank, and Hank is trying to calm her down now. And then she, she's like, no, I have to drive to San Diego. He needs me. And then Hank being the good man, he's like, no, I'm going to drive you. Because I don't think anyone that emotional should be driving. I was really scared that she was going to drive and that was going to be Get some sort crash, of something. Because 
we've seen her almost get in really bad accidents before. And when she's emotional, it's like being a drunk driver. She's because so she's not, hysterical, too. Yeah. It's not just like slight sobbing. It's. I did think it was dramatic. interesting, though, that Max didn't throw a fit, though, when Hank's like, I'm going to go and close up real quick. It seems like Max would be like, no, stay here. Yeah, I I did think about it, too. I was like, how is Max going to handle that? But I'm glad they didn't cover that because we already mm-hmm. saw one tantrum of Max. We didn't need to see another. We needed to see Amber's breakdown mm-hmm. this time. So we Max already had his scene. But I... So he closes down the shop, drives all the way to down to San Diego with Amber, and then we find out that Ryan's in surgery. They can't tell her exactly what's going on, and she falls asleep in the waiting room. And poor, like poor Hank, but so, so sweet at this moment, kind of like that surrogate father in a way, being there for for Amber when Sarah couldn't, or being that surrogate parent in general. And so Sarah goes down later on in the episode, and then uh, near the ending, we find out that Ryan is back. He's all wounded. We don't know what exactly happened, but he was in an accident. And we just see Amber. Do you think Amber is happy to see Ryan back in her life after everything that just went on? Well, I think she's probably just mostly scared for his health and you know, mm-hmm. when we see him, he's looking rough, and she obviously loves him and doesn't want him to be in any pain. So I'm sure it's a really bittersweet moment. I think she, I think Mae Whitman captured that pretty perfectly, too. So good. Just her reaction of all those different swirls of emotion all at once. Yeah. What did you think? I know. I wasn't excited to see him back. <laughs> oh, you were <laughs> To be honest, this is going to sound really mean because he's in the hospital, and he's all cut up, and I feel so bad. But... He left her and was so mean to her and broke her heart. And then this happens all of a sudden and she just like drops everything and goes running to him because it's true love, you know, or so we think. It is true love. It's true love. And I just think she's so cool. She's my favorite character. And I'm like, oh, this guy's so boring and negative and you're so fun and vibrant. Like, it's very Sarah and Hank Mm -hmm. in a way helping the emotionally broken men in their life. Yeah, I can see that. I really like how the show shows the relationships change when breakups happen, but which ones stay the same? Because that's so true where, you know, you'll have a friend and they break up, but then you're still friends with their friends. And Mm -hmm. they showed that with Crosby and Joel. And then I I just think they keep showing that a lot and... (laughs) It's cool to bring up. They don't really show that I, I agree. I think at this point, because everything that did happen with Ryan, Ryan just leaving, but that shows that Amber still loves Ryan, despite the fact that he left her. And the fact that she just, she's going to go running, well, I shouldn't say running, but like to go back to his side whenever Ryan needs her is was really sweet and really endearing to show that. Like she does still love Ryan. And it seemed like Ryan was happy that Amber was also there because Ryan, he's been in the military for a long time now. He, and we haven't really seen any of Ryan's friends. So it seems like Amber is really the only family and person that Ryan has in his life. He was also so genuinely surprised to see her, too. And so, you know, I mean, he just starts crying. He's just overcome with her being there. I feel like Amber was probably still his emergency contact. Yeah, oh, definitely. That's yeah. that's why she was called. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, sad. for him to think that she wouldn't come, you know, for him to be that surprised that she was there, I just... Probably knows mm-hmm. he messed up. Yeah, and that breakdown from Ryan knows that he messed up. Things like this scare me with Amber, though, because she's such an emotional person. And as you're saying, she wears her heart on her sleeve. So she makes rash decisions like, oh, I'm going to get engaged. No, I'm breaking up. Oh, I'm going to hop back into the marriage. What if she did that all of a sudden? That's the season finale. It's like, oh, I'm engaged again. I feel like no. she's the and you know, I wouldn't that be surprised would do if, that, though. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they did get called back on. I think that'd she's be... She's her mother's daughter. Yeah. It would end on a happy note for her for the season if that happened. But we ended the episode her... And and Ryan back together, kind of, you know, just being there for each other. I thought that was it was sweet, despite everything that did happen. That Ryan is, I, I don't. Hopefully, they'll touch more upon that for next week's episode because we just saw 
a few seconds of them actually together and I was like, oh, I kind of wanted emotional, really an emotional scene. Well, they'd already ripped our hearts out by that point, <laughs> I so know. I was kind of glad that they were being somewhat lenient. I was like, don't make me cry again. Yes, yeah, speaking of ripping hearts out, we got we to gotta talk about it. Christina. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, uh, just thinking about it is like I think we're all getting emotional now. I feel this, like this whole episode was her crying and me trying to hold, hold it back. my tears back from her crying. Oh, my goodness. Anytime okay. she cried. So we all know Christina had her cancer um, situation, and she recovered. But her friend Gwen, who was with her throughout the whole chemotherapy process and even afterwards, and Gwen was there for the election and all that, like her good friend Gwen, who also has cancer, is not doing well. And then, so Christina gets this call from Gwen's sister saying uh, Gwen's situation. Christina goes down to Gwen, and Gwen is just sitting there in her bed. And Christina just... Kind of, I mean, what do you do in those situations? Fortunately, I haven't really been in those situations. And, you know, please let us know, um, any of you listening out there, that when you go to a, a loved one, a friend, a family member, when you go to those situations when you kind of know it's it's the end and it's your goodbye, what do you say? It's so sad. I've been in that situation before where you're with a loved one and they're alive but they can't move or respond and you want to comfort them or help them somehow and you don't know what to do because you don't know what they can hear or what feels good to them it's horrible and that scene really choked me up that was the part where she moved her finger to respond Mm -hmm. that was where i cracked yeah I'd uh, already lost it by that point. As soon as that happened, as soon as she opened her eyes, I lost it. And then mm-hmm. when she just barely moved her finger, I was like, "Oh, can't deal with it." Yeah. It's, uh, but so Christina goes to Gwen. She's telling her the update on the whole situation with the the school, something that she wants to build and something that will live on forever. Which I thought was really sweet, despite the fact that she's talking to someone who is going to have an inevitable end so i thought that dichotomy there was uh, pretty smart on how they play that out and then she we get to that that sweet sad bittersweet moment where christina was like i just wanted to say thank you for everything you did for me you helped me through cancer and um it, and she doesn't want to let her go but unfortunately she had to so much worse for christina too it's not only that your friend's dying but she had that same disease and she, she went through that disease with her mm-hmm. and that's how they're friends they like they were facing death together and so for her to die from that is so horrible and the, the acting is just there was that the good five seconds of just pure silence where she was just sitting there with with Gwen and I'm like oh my god and then to follow that up with Christina's scene with Adam and we get the phone call that Gwen has passed away. And Christina's just like bawling on bed saying that how did she survive and Gwen didn't. So she's having that survivor's guilt in a way. And that acting, what did you think of Monica during this acting? She's oh my goodness, I, I can't. <laughs> I love Adam too. That was just so perfect when she's saying, you know, I'm angry. And instead of saying don't be or trying to coax her out of being upset. He said, you know, that's okay. This is, it's unfair. You should be angry. Be angry. I'm here She's for you. allowed to be mad. Yeah. Uh, I I thought that was amazing. I mean, and she, Christina said that she, she was scared. How was she feeling? Was she alone? Just like all those things that just flood through your head. And we see Christina, she's at that, that mad grieving stage. And hopefully Christina can just maybe use that to help with the building of the school because we, we well let's take it a shift because I felt we went really sad there but let's go happy now that Christina and Adam they want to they find this building that they want to use for their new charter school it's a big fixer upper but they're having problems trying to actually have ownership of the building that they might have to lease it from the city To the point where Christina actually has to go to Bob Little. I was kind of upset just to see Mm. Bob again in the picture. But I'm like, if it's for a city building, she's going to have to. 
And uh, what did you think of the scene of her and Bob and how Bob was like trying to be making up really lame excuses to not let have not let Christina have this building? I am not a fan of his at all. And I really liked what Christina said to him and was like, hey, don't choose to do something because of me or you and our drama. Do it because it's the right thing to do for the Mm -hmm. kids. I love that. I thought that was so perfect. And she goes, it really is that simple. Just that, God, Christina, you're you go, so girl. awesome. Yeah, that that was great. And she's like, do it, do it for do it for the good, better, good of the people, not for yourself. And I'm like, all right, Christina, you go. You should have been mayor, you know. And but, I think he knows that too. Mm-hmm. So I kind of feel like that put the the seed in his head. Like Bob, she clearly has some ambition that she at some point. Is going to be over you. Do you really want yeah. her holding grudges? And plus, we have the community on Christina's side. They want this charter school. So, I mean, if Bob's not going to give it to her, I'm sure the community might step up and help her get this. But we, we didn't really see it, um, how the outcome will be if she, they do get the building. I think they will. I think Bob will finally kind of, she he kind of got swayed a bit at the end of that conversation he was considering it so i think maybe that might get into predictions but i think she convinced bob well they were trying to decide what they would name the school and they said braverman can't be the name because max would get some big ego that the school was named after him (laughs) right so it sounds like if they get the school they're going to name it after gwen Gwen, yes. Which so we, I think is the so Gwen Chambers sweet. Charter School. We got, I love that. That was that was really sweet because we saw at the end of the episode we we saw a present from Gwen with an oak twe- tree and a check for I I couldn't read how much the check I was made see out. How much either. But uh, apparently it was a very generous amount to help start the school and you know to have the first tree on the school property and name it after Gwen. I think that that so just sweet. having that will show that the school will start. Despite however what's in the way, it will eventually start. Well, plus, you know, Christina gets to see that tree every day when she goes and works at the school and be reminded of the struggle. And it's nice that she knows that Gwen could hear her and that Gwen did yeah, she respond. Responded. She mm-hmm. had a final message for her, which is, I believe in you and I want good things for you i mean that's that's the best message you could get yeah and that's the best motivational tool too as well so uh, hopefully that'll make christina just be the awesome braverman that she is and start the school for the betterment of the whole community but uh anything else of this emotional crazy episode yeah i one of my favorite moments was it was very little but it, it made me laugh was uh when the house was fixed and Jabbar and Jasmine come back and Crosby was like, we fixed the floor and we see Jabbar just like sliding all over the place. That was really sweet. Okay, I know I bring this up all the time, but that baby is so, so white. white. Like yeah. next to Jabbar, whiter than Monica Potter. I'm just saying, I have to bring it up because every time <laughs> I watch that, I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> No, I, yeah, I really know she's like, needed, but that doesn't make sense because Jasmine's baby. the mom. But <laughs> it's okay. Maybe we'll get it. Maybe there'll be another storyline in the future. The plot thickens. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <Ow. laughs> but, yeah, let's, Not uh, <laughs> so, very emotional episode. Hopefully we got this, the sad episode out of the way so we can have a happier ending on, and the season on a happier note. So let's get into some news. After Buzz TV News. All right, so I read an interesting article on Washington Post. Uh, They said it was about Max Burkholder and his character dealing with autism and his acting and whatnot. And uh, the article just talked about how uh, Max Burkholder, how he started, because when he started Parenthood, he was 10 and when he got the role. And he didn't really know Asperger's syndrome at the time and what it really did and how people dealt with it and whatnot. So at the beginning of the season, he would work with uh, Matt Asner, who is the director of autism of South Carolina, uh, not Carolina, sorry, Southern California. And uh, Matt Asner like mentored him in ways and like this is how an autistic person might act to certain situations and like helped him throughout the years and then they said now that Max has 
had several seasons um, of playing Max that he he needs less lessons because he knows how Max will usually react to situations and stuff. And uh, Matt Asner, the director, said the per- portrayal of a person with Asperger's is pretty spot on. He's incredible. That kid deserves He's an Emmy. Yeah. I loved him in The Purge too. It was such a I've different character. <laughs> he started it. He was he was great. I haven't seen the. He purge. was really good. It's, it was interesting seeing him in a completely different character. Yeah, and he. So when the director of autism says that the portrayal is spot on, that that shows that how um, how relevant it is in the society that everyone who needs to like really know how to handle autism should watch Parenthood because it is very realistic. And then uh, Monica Potter also mentioned in the article that she loves working with Max because he's such a smart, intelligent, and funny kid on set, and it was like one of the highlights of her days. So I thought that was very sweet. And then also, we had the cross uh, yeah. crossover episode Speaking of the of About Crosby's a Boy baby. Parenthood with Crosby. So you guys watched the episode. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, Crosby was stuck with the baby and had to bring the baby to poker night with all the guys, which was funny because <laughs> he's being such a dad. And Crosby is such a chill, cool guy. You know, he doesn't want to be doing that. But it's just funny because we're such big fans of this show, obviously, mm-hmm. why we're here right now. That's why I loved in this episode when Crosby was showing Joel, you know, the kids on the phone. I was like, oh, he was just doing pretty much the exact same thing to uh... Will. And yeah. everybody else at the poker game on about a boy. Oh, that's sweet. So was it just the poker game night or mm-hmm. just yeah. the boys' night? Just kind of yeah, came over just showed the boys up night. and they were like, you brought your baby? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> I brought my baby to poker night. Look how cool my baby is. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, so that's on yeah, About a Boy, which is also Jason Kadam's TV show, which airs Tuesday nights of the week. So that I believe that's Same NBC. Network as NBC. well so definitely check out that crossover episode i definitely will that seems like a fun a fun situation you know it's always fun to watch the guys tonight so uh, you know what let's go into predictions and now you're after buzz tv predictions these previews for parenthood they get me so worked up at the end of every episode okay we saw a lot happen patty Hattie. Not only is she back apparently for the coming back blonde, but also gay, and they don't have a gay character, so it's kind of like, been. finally. I thought so, too, because I thought <laughs> last week's episode, I'm like, they've covered basically everything in parenthood, and like divorces, breaking up, new relationships, everything. I was like, they haven't really touched upon the homosexuality story, and I was like, that'd be so, that'd be such a progressive family if they did that. And then, lo and behold, Hattie kissed a girl. Does that really make her homosexual? Is she just testing the waters or really finding out who she is? I mean, it is college, that's when you tend to find out who you are in life. Also, these previews tend to build it up so much, and we think that, oh my gosh, she's sleeping with this girl, and then we're like, oh, they just touched hands at a... Was it just a tease? That's my thing. I'm like, was it just a tease? Because the girl said, tell your parents when you feel comfortable and when you want to, and then Max kind of outs her. That's why Mm -hmm. I feel like it probably is. And because, again, they haven't really touched on that, so I feel like that would be kind of a tease if they were like oh just kidding she's actually straight it's like well then why even do it? <laughs> how do you think adam and christina will react to that not very well at first but i think they'll accept like once they find out i can see christina like freaking out at first and worrying yeah. and then being like totally fine with it after like a day like the initial reaction. I don't think yeah. she would even the freak out. Initial, right? I feel like but, they, yeah, I just, I feel like they're such accepting, cool parents. I feel like Remember when she cut her hair that. off she and dyed didn't. it black and they like wanted to kill her? Yeah, but I also feel like they <laughs> but probably But that was a very rebel a move. They want her back. And if they feel like she isn't, if she feels like she's not accepted, they don't want her to feel like that. I hope they turn her full on gay because first of all, they don't have a gay character. That would be great. And so many people go through changes that time of their life. They go away to college. Their eyes are open to new experiences and people and you really grow to learn who you are around that age. I feel like a lot of television a lot of television shows and maybe some film, but I notice it more in television that whenever someone goes to college, it's always the freshman year where they test the waters and have that homosexual relationship with someone. 
it's always the freshman year. And maybe that's when they, they realize, oh, maybe they're straight, maybe they're not. But I, I feel it's always the first year of college. It's so like you're fresh Maybe it at is life. just that. <laughs> in, you just finished high school. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. If she wants to be a lesbian, go for it. I was like, I think it'd be a really fun dynamic that they'll bring to parenthood. I like that we didn't really see a lot of relationship things with Hattie either, you know, throughout the whole series. There was a lot of focus on Amber and all of her relationships, but Hattie was, they kind of would touch on it, but it was more yeah, like and Hattie was kind of secure in herself already. Yeah. So I like that she's in a, in a happy relationship and now. And Hattie, we had two... We saw her with two guys already, and then they both ended on fairly sadder notes. And now maybe this this relationship would be a happier note for her. So also we see Hank and Sarah because all these episodes, Hank and Sarah, H- Hank's been like pouring out his emotions to Sarah and like his true feelings and whatnot. And we saw tonight that Sarah just kind of smiled and like, okay, he he's being genuinely sweet because we did. I mean, I think we skipped the the moment where Sarah did talk to um, Adam about Hank being open and honest and whatnot. But Hank seem, Sarah seems like she's being kind of accepting of it, maybe may open to being back with Hank. But in the previous we see Her- Sarah just going right up to Hank and laying a big one on him. Do you think that's the tease as well? I think that Adam's talk kind of helped her want to be back with Hank because I think she wasn't feeling it until he had that conversation with her. Okay. I think it'll just the combination of everything because Sarah didn't even see how Hank was interacting with Max but just I mean all she saw was that he drove Amber and I loved when he's trying to pick up the magazine because he's <laughs> been was sitting so there funny. for two hours because he doesn't want to wake Amber <laughs> up. And he has to go to the bathroom. bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> that was really, that was a nice, I think tonight's episode, it had the perfect balance of funny little moments with the, the very big, serious, heart-wrenching scene. So it was like just a great balance throughout, evenly mixed. It's the compassion and the selflessness combined mm-hmm. that they show that you're just instantly like oh yeah no i do love that character you're yeah. right i love we love all these characters <laughs> i mean that's why we're here every week talking about them but in the meantime to keep talking about them where can we all find you you can find me on twitter and instagram at danica kennedy you can find me on twitter at elena jordan and also i'll be at the comedy store if you're in los angeles this saturday at 11 30 Oh, and you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. You can follow Tiana Hobson. She's at Coachella right now having fun. Uh, you can follow her on Twitter <laughs> and on Instagram at the Tiana Hobson. You can follow all of us here at AfterBuzz at AfterBuzz TV, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that fun stuff. And uh, definitely check out the AfterBuzz TV app. Rate, comment, download, and rate, comment, download this after show. And thank you, Phil, for engineering. We will see you next week for our finale episode. Oh, my goodness. Thanks, guys. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.